The Rear Guard by Tennis Morrill. The castle would hold, no matter the forces, the walls of Casa Cascabel Hall would never fail, but that was small consolation for Menegur. He was hungry. In fact, he had never been so hungry. The well in the atrium of the fortress supplied him with enough water to hold there until the fourth era, but his stomach reminded but his stomach reminded Menegur minute to minute that he needed food. The wagon load of supplies mocked him. When his army, the forces of King Solitude, had left Cascabel Hall, and he had manned the battlements as the rear guard to protect their retreat, they had left a wagon behind to supply him with enough food for months. It was not until the night after they left that he inspected the larder and found that nothing edible was in the wagon. Trunk after trunk was filled with Netch armor from the army's insurrection into Morrowind. Apparently, his Nord confederates had assumed that the lightly opaque material was hardtack in aspic. If the Dunmer, whose caravan had been raided, knew about this, they would never have been. They would never be able to stop laughing. Menegur thought that his fellow mercenary and kinswoman, Aaron, would have found this amusing as well. She had spoken with great authority about Netch leather, being an expert of sorts on light armor. But she had made a point to mention that it could not be eaten like other leather in occasions of hardship. It was a pity she couldn't be there to enjoy the irony, Menegur thought savagely. She had returned to Morrowind even before the king's army had left, preferring a life as a wanted fugitive to a free existence in the cold of the Skyrim. All the weeds in the courtyard had been devoured by the rear guard's sixteenth day manning Cascabel Hall. The entire castle had been scoured, rotten tubers in the mulch pile found and consumed, a dusty bouquet in the countess's chamber, bedchamber eaten, almost every rat and insect, but the most cunning infesting the castle walls had been tracked down and gobbled up. The castellan's chambers, filled with acrid and edible law books, had yielded up a couple crumbs of bread. Menegur had even scrapped the scraped the moss from the stones. There was no denying it. He would be dead from starvation before his army returned to break the ranks of the enemies who surrounded the fortress. The worst part, said Menegur, who had taken to talking to himself on only the second day alone in the castle, is how close sustenance is. A vast arbor of golden apples stretched acre after acre near the castle walls. The sunlit cast the sunlight cast a seductive gleam on the fruit, and the cruel wind carried sweet smells into Casa Cabell to torture him. Like most Bosmer, Menegur was an archer. He was a master of long and medium distance fighting, but in close quarters, as he would be if he dared to leave the castle and enter the enemy's camp in the Arbor, he knew he would not last long. At some point, he knew he would have to try. But he had been dreading the day. It was upon him now. Menegur put on the Netch armor for the first time, feeling the powdery, almost velvet texture of the rendered, rendered leather against his skin. There was also a barely perceptible throb, which he recognized as a remnant nematoc nematocytes of the Netch's venomous flesh, still tingling months after its death with domesticated poison. The combination made him feel energized. Aaron had described the sensation perfectly, just as she had explained how to defend himself while wearing Netch leather armor. Under cover of night, Menegur crept out of the back gate of the castle, locking it behind him with a rather cumbersome key. He made for the arbor as quietly as he could, but a passing sentry coming behind a tree saw him. Remaining calm, Menegur did as he remembered Aaron had instructed, only moving after the attack had been launched. The sentry's blade glided against the armor and knocked to the left, throwing the young man off balance. That was the trick as he understood it. You had to be prepared to be hit, and merely move with the blow, allowing the membranous armor to divert the injury away. Use your enemy's momentum against him, as Aaron used to say. 
There were several more close encounters in the arbor, but each swing of an axe and each thrust of a sword found purchase elsewhere. With handfuls of apples, Menager ran the gauntlet back to the castle. He locked the back gate door behind him and fell into an orgy of eating. For week after week, the Bosmer stole out to gather his food. The guards began anticipating his raids, but he kept his schedule irregular and always remembered when attacking, when attacked to wait for the blow, accept it, and then turn. In such a way, he lived and survived his lonely vigil in Cascabel Hall. Four months later, after he was preparing for another seizure of apples, Metiger heard a, lard, a loud clamor at the front gate. Surveying the group from a safe distance on the battlements, he saw the shields of the King of Solitude, his ally, the Count of Cascabel, and their enemy, the King of Farun. Evidently, a truce had been called. Menager opened the gates, and the combined armies flooded the courtyard. Many of the knights of Farun sought to shake the hand of the man they had named the Shadow of the Arbor, expressing their admiration at his defensive skills and apologizing good-naturedly for their attempts to slay him. Only doing their job, you know. There's hardly an apple left on the vines, said King, the King of Solitude. Well, I started on the edges and worked my way in, explained Menager. I brought back extra fruit to tempt the rats out of the wall so I could have a little meat as well. We've spent the last several months working out the details of the truce, said the king. Really quite exhausting. At any rate, the count will be taking back possession of his castle now, but there is a small detail we need to work out. You're a mercenary, and as such responsible for your own expenses. If you had been a subject of mine, things might be different, but there are certain old rules of law that must be respected. Metiger anticipated the strike. The problem is, the king continued, you've taken a good deal of the count's crops while here. By any reasonable computation, you've eaten an, equal, an amount equal to and likely exceeding your mercenaries' wages. Obviously, I would not want to penalize you for the excellent job you've done defending the castle in unfortunate... Un uncomfortable circumstances, but you agree that it's important that we observe the old rules of law, don't you? Of course, replied Menager, accepting the blow. I'm delighted to hear that, said the king. Our estimation is that you owe the Count of Cascabel 37 imperial gold, which I will gladly pay to myself with interest after the autumn tide harvest, said Menager. There is more left on the vine than you suggest. The kings of Solitude and Farun and the Count of Cascabel stared at the Bosmer. We agreed to abide to the strictest old rules of law, and I've had time to read a great many books over the time you were making your truce. In Third Era 246, during the reign of Uriel IV, the Imperial Council, in an attempt to clear up some questions of property rights in Skyrim during those chaotic days, decreed that any man without a liege who occupied a castle for more than three months would be granted the rights and titles of that estate. It's a good law, of course, meant to discourage absent and foreign landlords, Menager smiled, feeling the now familiar sensation of a glancing strike diverting. By the rule of law, I am the Count of Cascabel. The rear guard's son still holds the title of Count, still hold the title of Count of Cascabel, and he grows the finest, most delectable apples in the empire.